Well, greetings, everyone, and uh, welcome to the October session of our Receiving Grace Bible Study. We are squeezing it in under the wire, that's for sure. But thank you for being here. The study is called God's Power Works in Us. And uh, it's going to look at all the ways in which uh, Paul outlines that in his letter to the Ephesians. Last month, and we talked about whether grace is real. And uh, next month, we will be talking about grace-filled living, ancient and new. Uh, but this, this month, uh, how God's power works in us. And one of the things that you probably know is that uh, Paul spent um, some time in prison uh, for his beliefs. And so... Um, one of the things that is might be helpful in your study is to do a little reading from three other imprisoned Christian thinkers. Um, and so some of these you might have read already, but here are a couple of recommendations. Uh, first of all, John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress, which was first published in 1678. Now, Bunyan's book is one of the most popular in history, and he began writing it when he was in prison. He was serving time for rogue preaching or preaching that was uh, non-conformist to uh, society outside the Church of England, and uh, that was illegal in the 17th century Britain. We've been fortunate up to this point, anyway, of having the freedom to say whatever we want to say from the pulpit without uh, the government interfering um, also, Dietrich Bonhoeffer's Letters and Prayers from Prison, uh, as you know, Bonhoeffer wrote some of his most influential the theological writings from 1943 to 1945, when he was jailed by the Gestapo for his protests against the rise of Nazism and Hitler in Germany. Uh, and finally, Martin Luther King Jr.'s Letter from a Birmingham Jail. Uh, it is his most famous letter written in 1963 while serving time in jail in Alabama for peacefully protesting. He was writing to white clergy and leaders who criticized him for wanting to move too fast to end the segregation. So um, those are just some additional resources that I would share with you uh, if you want to dive a little more deeply into this. Now, as uh, was true with our last session, we're going to begin this uh, with a hymn and uh, a prayer first, and then uh, you'll have the opportunity to uh, sing, Will You Come and Follow Me? And then I'm going to um, play for you the video by uh, Reverend Heidi Haverkamp, who is the author of this study. Uh, and then... Uh, because we're kind of at the end of the month and I haven't had a lot of time for uh, prepping things for reasons you all know, um, I'm going to uh, include a copy of the study uh, for you to do when and where you see fit and hope that that provides um, some meaning for you as we continue the study of Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Um, the November segment of it is already available, so I hope to have it out much closer to the beginning of the month rather than the end of the month. Let's pray. Gracious God, who is above all and through all and in all, teach us to have courage, boldness, and confidence through our faith in Christ so that we will believe that your power working in us through the Spirit is always inviting us to love and heal the world. Amen. I hope you enjoy the study.
Hi there, my name is Heidi Haverkamp and this is the video two for session two of the Gather Magazine Bible Study for Ephesians in the fall of 2024. My name is Heidi Haverkamp and I wrote the Bible study and I'm glad to share a little video with you to think a little bit about this session and about grace, receiving grace and about Ephesians. And I'm speaking to you from my pantry, um, which I'll talk more about in just a little bit. Um, I'd like to read the focus verse for session two, which is uh, Ephesians chapter three, verse 20. God's power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. God's power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. I, that's when I just need to read over and over again. That's why I read it a second time to you. It's, um, it's a verse that's always struck me. Um, and I think because it's sort of amazing to me, raised as someone, um, raised to work hard, raised to keep going. Um, but this verse suggests that even when we're not working hard or think that we're doing much of anything, still God is working through us still. God can work in us and accomplish more than we can ask or imagine with our only being sort of a part, a small part of that action. Um, and I think that's so true that the Holy Spirit can come and work around us and through us, sometimes in ways we don't expect, sometimes in ways that seem very easy to us and maybe not to others, um, or just even easy things like um, being a good neighbor or serving someone in need. Um, so I guess, I want to offer you that to start as a way to think about grace, that often we think we have to work so much harder than maybe we really do because God is always working through us. And secondly, in this verse, God said, the verse says God is working through us. So yes, through me and through you, but also through us, through us, through all of you who might be listening to this video, to our neighbors, to people out in the world, to people in church, to people outside of church, God is working in us to accomplish more than we can ask or imagine. So not just me by myself, but as part of the body, the body of Christ, the body of the world, the body of all of creation. Um, we so often think about ourselves as lonely Christians all by ourselves. That what does God expect me to do? But God has set us in community and God has made us part of the body of Christ. And the body of Christ has many members, right? Paul tells us in Corinthians. And all those members are important and they're all different. And the eye cannot say to the ear, I don't need you, or the, the hand to the foot, I don't need you, right? We all have a part that we play and we all need to be together, part of the body, making it work. And I'm in my pantry because I wonder sometimes if that metaphor gets a little tired. We've heard it so many times. And I have been thinking a little bit about recipes and cooking and how preparing food is, is also very much something that needs a lot of different members, a lot of pieces, a lot of ingredients to make something a lot more delicious and interesting to eat than something that's just one ingredient alone. And of course, most things you would never eat all by themselves, um, or at least they taste better, even if you just add simple ingredients to them, like a chicken breast that you might saute in a pan. It's so much more delicious with some oil or butter or a kitty cat, um, or, salt and pepper, even just those simple things make it such a much more flavorful dish. And of course, a cake has many, many ingredients that it needs to become this marvelous thing that it is. We're so used to it, we don't think about how marvelous a cake is or bread um, or pasta with just a little butter and garlic makes it so much more wonderful. A piece of toast can be lovely by itself, but so much more lovely with something on top of it. And all of these things work so beautifully together. There's none that is better than the other. They all work in concert to make this wonderful thing. And I, I hope that we can think about the way that we are the church together and we are the world together and that we're families and groups, that we are all these different ingredients and we can't all be the same. We're not supposed to be the same. We're supposed to enrich and play off one another in all of our different ways. So I offer that to you as part of this idea of grace, that it is a grace to be who we are with all of our limitations and our strengths because they're, they're tied to each other. Um, and that it is a grace to belong to one another and to be in this together. Um, and I want to read you something that I found online by uh, a Korean 
man or woman, I'm not quite sure, but it really struck me and I, I'd like to read it to you. And it's about how, it's kind of a harsh take on how we all belong to each other. And this person says, individualism is rubbish. The individual is an entirely powerless unit. It could not give birth to itself, cannot raise itself, educate itself, or change the world itself. It is entirely a product of the people and environment around it. To emphasize the individual is an error. It's a hard pill to swallow for Westerners brought up in an individualistic mindset, but the reality is that you have never really done anything by yourself. Your actions and very nature are defined by your relations with outside people, with the land, with material things. We are not just individuals, we are part of one another. We are made by many different parts of our environment and families and people and just this great big world that God has set us in. So God's power at work within us, big, big us, is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. Amen and peace be with you.